So let's take a look at some exponential growth and decay models. First off, at the top here, I have four different versions of an exponential equation. And to a math teacher, these are all the same equation. So let's look at their similarities. Notice on the left side of all of our equal signs, um, we have one thing. And here, this is just emphasizing a function notation, that y of t. Then we have an a or an a sub 0. This could be a p sub 0. We could have any letter here. That represents. So this first number here is our initial amount. How much to start with? Okay. The y, the thing that's all by itself on the left-hand side, is how much you have later. Okay. So this a, the coefficient, is going to be the same throughout. The y or the p or the y of t. These are all going to be changing depending on what value you have for t. Now comes the letter e on most of them. Right? e is just the number, right? that irrational number, 2.718, yada, yada, yada. k, or r, notice I'm not messing with this one. This one's a little bit different. And if I get a chance, I'll talk to you about that. k and r, these are the growth or decay constant. That means it stays fixed for any given problem. Now, I say growth or decay. The way you can tell which one it is, it's growth if it's positive, and it's decay if it's negative. Okay. And then the last letter we have up here is that t. So t is just right our time. And you'll want to be careful to make sure you're staying in the same time. So if it's given in years, then your time should be scaled to be years or in seconds. And typically, they'll stay the same throughout. OK, now this last one. If we do a, a straight up and down comparison here, I have up on the top one, I have e to the k times t, right? Down here, I don't have an e. I have this letter b. but you will remember, well, I think I might leave it to you to verify that if we set b equal to e to the k, that these two equations are exactly the same. All right, I want to get to some examples. I have one for growth and one for decay. So the first one, y equals 500 times e raised to the 0 0.032t. So before I even get started answering the questions that I've posed, I'm going to pose two more. Hey, how much do we start with? Exactly, 500. This is our initial amount of whatever, bacteria, something that's going to grow exponentially. And what's, is it a growth or decay? Right, so it's growth because it's bigger than 0. And the growth constant is? 0.032. All right, so now let's, there we go, let's answer the questions I've posed. How much are we going to have in 10 years? So 10 goes in for t, exactly. So when we're answering part a, we are simply going to plug a 10 in where the t was and do that calculation. So depending on your calculator, I'm going to put mine over here, and hopefully it shows up. I know they're kind of hard here. Ah, it shows up OK. Um, my calculator has a newer operating system on it, so it automatically puts my exponent up above. And I know it's tiny, but you can zoom in. Um, if yours doesn't, be sure to either do your multiplying in your head or wrap it in parentheses so that you don't end up taking e and raise it to the point zero. 3, 2, get that result and then multiply it by 10, right? You don't want that. You want the power to be 0 0.032 times 10. All right, so it says that in 10 years, I will have 688.56 of whatever it was that we had. So y of 10, if you wanted to do that to emphasize, I'm going to move my calculator here, is 688.56. All right, B. When do we have 600? So when, right, that's a big clue. Hey, we're looking for a time. That's the unknown. 
So when do we have 600, right? That's how much we have. That's what the Y and the A stand for. How much of whatever it is do you have? Money or bacteria, typically, or cats sometimes. So 600 goes in for the Y, right? That's what we have later. It doesn't go in for the 500. That's how much we start with. When do we grow to 600? So 600 equals 500 e to the 0 0.032 t. And now we have to solve for t. And notice it's up here in the balcony. So my first step would be to divide the 500. I want to isolate that e factor. So now I have 6 fifths equals e to the 0 0.032 t. Right? And we know how to free the t from the balcony up there. Right? We use a log to break through the door. So we're going to apply the natural log because it has the same base as the base that's holding our t that we want. I'm going to squeeze it in right up here. So now I have the natural log of 6 fifths. My calculator will tell me an approximation if I have to. On the right side, right, that log breaks right through the door and our little princess and her entourage fall to the ground. And then to solve for t, we would divide both sides by the point zero three two. And I know it's getting messy and I still have c to do. I'll grab a little piece of paper here to finish that one. So the time to reach 600 is exactly this number, or approximately, and I'll squeeze that in right up here. I'm going to do the calculations off screen here because I can't fit it on there. So 6 divided by 5, close parenthesis, divide, 0 0.032, enter. It looks like in approximately 5.7 years, we grow to 600. Okay, which makes sense, right? In 10 years, we got up to 688, so I'd expect something a little bit less than 10. Okay, that's quite a bit less, but that's okay. Now, this second part right here, this I think third part, part C, the doubling time. So how much will we have if we've doubled what we started with? Exactly, a thousand. But what's super awesome about exponential growth is it doesn't matter if we started with 500 or if we started with 5. It takes the same amount to double. Okay? Not the same amount of time to get to 1,000, but the same amount of time to double from what you started with. So this is what that calculation looks like. So doubling time, 100 equals, sorry, 1,000, 500, e to the 0 0.032t. Divide the 500, I'm going to do that in my head, 2 equals e 0 0.032t. Remember, t is up here in the balcony, so we need that natural log to come through and break down the door. Natural log of 2 is a number my calculator will approximate for me. Right through the door, my exponent, who I like to call the princess, right falls down. Here's the t I'm looking for. Now it all it has is the 0 0.032 around it, so I'll divide that across and we'll get t equals exactly the natural log of 2 divided by 0 0.032 or approximately, so this is our doubling time, approximately the natural log of 2. If your calculator gives you parentheses to start with, be sure to close them before you do your division symbol. It looks like 21.66 years to double from what we started with Whatever we start with, it takes 21.66 years to double it. Okay, so there's exponential growth. Let's try an exponential decay. And one of the most common ones you'll see is a half-life. So I grabbed this statistic off Wikipedia, thank you very much. And it says that strontium-90 has a half-life of 29.1 years. Actually, I grabbed this one from something other than Wikipedia, because Wikipedia had 28 years or something like that. So. I went with the other version, epa.gov says it's 29.1 years. So now I have find k, so find that growth or that decay constant. But I haven't given you a starting amount. So maybe you're scanning down here at b and say, oh, but you started with 50 kilograms. Okay, I'll use that. You can, but you don't have to. So let me show you real quick why you don't have to. So I'm going to write my model, y equals a e to the kt. 
The half-life means how long does it take to have half of what you started with. That's what a half-life means. How long until you have half of your starting amount? So T would be unknown. But if I want to know the half-life, the Y would be half of A. So during one half-life, Y would be half of A. So half of A, and I get there when T is 29.1 years. Okay. So I have half of what I start with after 29.1 years. Notice now, okay, I see you, what you're saying. You have two unknowns, but look, right, if I divide both sides by A or multiply both sides by 1 over A if you prefer, um, divide this one, multiply that one, my A's cancel on both sides, so now I have 1 half equals e to the 29.1k. I only have one unknown that I can solve for, which happens to be the one I wanted to find. Okay, so now that you've seen me do it twice, you know to grab that natural log, apply it to both sides. Natural log of 0.5 equals, I'm not even going to write it on the right because it just and the princess falls down, and then divide by the 29.1k and Remember what kind of number you're looking for and why. So off screen, natural law, 0.5, close parenthesis, divide, 29.1. K is approximately equal to negative 0 0.0238. Rounds nicely there. Yes, and those of you who are handy dandy with your calculators, you can go ahead and leave all of those decimals in there. I find most students get tired of, um, well, don't like to do that, and so they typically write these out. But don't round too soon if you're doing that. Okay, so now I have my constant. Now, part B. If I start with 50 kilograms, how much will I have in 100 years? So the 50, where is that going to go? Who, what variable does that take the place of? Exactly, right? How much you start with? That A, that coefficient in front. So the model to answer question B y equals 50 e to the k, which we now know is this number, negative 0 0.0238 t. So there's my model. And the question says, how much do I have in 100 years? So we're just going to plug 100 in for t. y equals 50 e to the, oh, I'm just going to move my decimal, is that okay? So it's going to be 100 times this number, which means my decimal just moves over. So negative 2.38, which my calculator will approximate for me as 50 e to the, change sign, 2.38, enter, approximately 4.63 kilograms after 50 years. I'm sorry, after 100 years. That's right, that wasn't making sense. So here's what, oh, there's, there's the number. Here's what gave me pause right there. And so it can give you pause. You can check your answer for uh, reasonableness. If I start with 50, right, 50 is where I start with. After the first 29 years, right, I should be down to 25. After the next 29 years, I should be down half again. 12.5. Right. So each half-life, I go down by half of what I had before. 29 gets me to 6.25. Well, how many 29s is that? How many years are we up to? Well, that's 87 years to get to 6.25, so that totally makes sense. All right, good luck with these.